My 850 horsepower 2JZ swapped S14 is an absolute animal on and off track. But with great power comes great responsibility to not break stuff. In this video, I'm gonna show you a very quick and simple install that has the potential to save you hundreds or even thousands of dollars in drivetrain components. This is the Tilton Flow Control Valve. Today, we're gonna to take a look at what it does and show a very quick install on my 2JZ swapped S14 drift car. Before we begin with the install, let's talk about what this component is and what it does. The Tilton Flow Control Valve is a small fluid control valve that lives between your clutch master cylinder and your clutch slave cylinder. Its main purpose is to control the speed at which your clutch can re-engage when you release your foot from the pedal. This video from Real Street is a rather extreme example, but it demonstrates how clutch re-engagement is dramatically slowed down by having one of these valves in place. At first, this may seem counterintuitive for drifting because when clutch kicking, why would you want to have your clutch re-engagement slowed down? One of the biggest causes of parts failure in drifting is shock load. When clutch kicking a car, shock is transmitted from the engine to the rest of the drivetrain extremely quickly. With the tilt and flow control valve and the largest orifice pill selected, you're able to create a very, very small slowing down of this re-engagement that helps to slowly load up your drivetrain and protect your transmission, differential, and axles. Today, we're gonna to be installing a kit from Chase Bays that includes the tilt and flow control valve and all of the pre-cut lines necessary to make it fit. Chase Bays claimed they have seen a dramatic reduction of axle breakage in the cars that they run this on, so what better way to put this to the test than to run it on my 2JZ powered S14. Installing this kit is relatively straightforward and simple. Firstly, remove the existing clutch line from the clutch slave cylinder and allow the fluid to drain. Next, remove the old clutch line from the clutch master cylinder. Now feed the top section of the clutch line down into the engine bay and reattach the banjo bolt to the clutch master cylinder, ensuring that the banjo bolt has a crush washer on both top and bottom faces. Back underneath the car, attach the second piece of line and the flow control valve itself to the first piece of line that we just fed down. Once these are securely connected, zip tie this or fasten it somehow out of the way. And finally, reconnect the AN line to the clutch slave cylinder. That's how simple it is to install this kit from Chase Bays. So it's pretty much a no brainer to install this and try to mitigate some of that drivetrain shock risk. The only thing left to do after installation is re-bleed the system. Now I will say it's a little bit harder to bleed the clutch system than it is to do something like brakes or your handbrake. So I'll recommend purchasing a vacuum bleeding kit and doing it that way. I actually had to do mine several times to get all of the air out and it did take quite a while. So that's gonna be the most tedious part of this install. So after installing this, let's answer the question, does this actually work? Now, immediately after installing this kit, I did drive this car at our end of year drift event for two days straight on one OEM 350Z axle and one Duralast axle from AutoZone, and I did not break anything. Now I will say, in addition to installing this kit, I made some conscious changes to my driving style, and I do believe that a combination of these two things is what allowed me to keep all of my components intact for two days of straight drifting. This is definitely gonna vary by the kind of car and power that you have, but on a mid to high power setup, you can usually get away with a manually slower clutch kick that still has the same effect, but just isn't as hard on all of your drivetrain components. I did notice on the street that my gear changes, especially downshifts, were a lot smoother due to this kit. In the future, I'm definitely gonna try to move pill sizes to a slightly smaller pill just to see how it affects the setup, but I'm definitely happy with this kit and I would definitely recommend installing it on your car if you're considering it. That's going to be all for this video, but if you're interested in this build and want to see more, please stay tuned. This project has been many years in the making, and I'm very excited to show you everything I've put together with this car. If you're interested in seeing more of that, drop a subscribe and stay tuned for future videos.